good evening and welcome to all of my friends and students i hope that all of you have been staying healthy and in high spirits and preparing for uh, your examination very well right so guys in the chat box i request all of you to please show me your presence and uh, let me know about all the audio video thing is everything is okay so that we can start today's important clinical case scenarios or important topics so i request all of you to please uh, wave your hands or uh, show your presence so that we can start the class and confirm me about all uh, audio video thing हाँ जी कैन बी स्टार्ट थैंक यू वेरी रेडी सो गाइज अगेन वी विल फॉलो द सेम रूल you will have 45 seconds to answer the question so today the important topics i have framed out is from uh, uh, mainly first of all rheumatology then uh, respiratory medicine and if the time will allow we will also discuss the nephrology part right so let's discuss about the first very question so here is your first question upon the screens you will have 45 seconds to participate in this question and i request all of you to please answer your options in the chat box and then we will discuss about the question right so i will read the question and then we will start with these 45 seconds so as i told you earlier that the best way to approach an mcq read the options first and then read the last line what the examiner is asking from you right so what is this cyclophosphamide b methotrexate sulfur salicylic azathioprine by reading this question options we are very clear that the examiner is going to talk about some rheumatological disorders because these drugs are disease modifying anti rheumatoid drugs got my point now what is the last line which among the following is not advised during pregnancy right okay a 30 year old female is a non case of rheumatoid arthritis got one year uh, got married one year ago and now she wants to plan family Which of the following is not advised during pregnancy? You have forty-five seconds. हाँ जी. Fifteen seconds left. Okay, so I am receiving appropriately the right answer. Yeah. Okay, guys. So let's discuss about this question. So this question is: This lady is basically a known case of rheumatoid arthritis. It means she is on anti-rheumatoid drugs, or we can call it as DMARDs, disease-modifying anti-rheumatoid drugs like cyclophosphamide, methotrexate, sulfasalazine, and azithromycin. Now. you must be remembering this thing that rheumatoid arthritis is an inflammatory disease first of all do remember this thing right so if you have to withdraw one drug among all these drugs see cyclophosphamide sulfasalazine azithro my uh, this one uh, azathioprine these all are relative contraindication these are not the absolute contraindication these are relative contraindication but point which i am trying to explain you is that methotrexate is a teratogenic drug and it is an absolute contraindication it is an absolute contraindication although all these drugs are contraindicated but among these options given one drug methotrexate is absolutely contraindicated that's why methotrexate is not given in this option got my point okay so what is the best likely option if this patient if they ask you another question that what is the best likely option that this lady has to control her symptoms of the rheumatoid arthritis as well as she has to follow the pregnancy 
then if in the options i'm just putting a hypothetical situation if in the option you have an option of steroids right like prednisolone prednis solone then my dear friends despite of some side effects like it increases you know blood sugar levels that it is going to see pregnancy is going to be a uh, uh, that a state where a female can have higher sugar levels right and we know that the steroids also give hyperglycemia despite of this side effect like it also gives side effect like osteoporosis risk of diabetes mellitus skin thickening we have to give prednisolone so that the symptoms of the rheumatoid arthritis pain symptoms and inflammatory symptoms they should remain in limit and they should be controlled as well so this should be your answer that among all the options if prednisolone is written and what drug is given then you have to give the answer prednisolone okay ji let's go to the next question please read the options first and then last line and then answer me guys i am underlining this situation that they are asking less likely to be associated rajendra it is they are asking less likely to be associated paru kasan sir please read the last line i have underlined that they are asking the less likely to be associated with his leg condition Okay, let's read this question. Options first: hyperthyroidism, DVT, deviant thrombosis, chronic dialysis, and sarcoidosis. Which among the following is less likely to be associated with this leg condition? Now, what is the question? A 50-year-old male patient presented to emergency department with swelling over the right leg. So this is the important history that swelling over the right leg. He reports that he had congestive heart failure. Okay, on examination, his right knee and right lower leg is hot. and tender swelling so this is important hot and tender leg swelling ultrasound shows compressible cystic mass another important thing compressible cystic mass behind medial foramen epicondyle with compressible veins in the right leg so there are different important clues guys before you proceed further i would like to know that can you anyone please tell me what is the actual diagnosis and why you are going to give me the answer like someone is giving me the answer d or uh, some people are giving me the answer b before proceeding to any option i request you to please write in the chat box what do you think what this patient is having or what is the diagnosis of this patient guys anyone anyone would like to say see guys what is this patient as having this patient is basically having a baker's cyst what is baker's cyst now i have told you that if this patient is having baker's cyst now can would you like to change your options this patient is having baker's cyst now put your pens down and understand the concept baker's cyst may mimic with d vein thrombosis it may resemble with d vein thrombosis the only thing which can differentiate is ultrasound ultrasound will actually tell you whether it is thrombosed or not thrombosed it can tell you the flow of the blood in the veins 
if it had been deep in thrombosis then my dear friend there should not have any cystic mass behind the medial epicondyle with compressible veins in the right leg they would have spoken about the flow of the blood in that particular vein whatsoever it was they would have told you about the flow the velocity of the blood in the veins they are not talking so compressible cyst behind the medial foramen epicondyle tells us that the patient is having uh, this uh, baker cyst now what is baker cyst basically this is a benign this is a benign mass right in the popliteal fossa first of all we have to understand that this is a benign mass in the popliteal fossa arising between the tendons of the medial we uh, i don't have the pictures right now or else i would have shown that it is a uh, uh, you know a benign mass in the popliteal uh, fossa which arises between the tendons right of the medial head of the gastrocnemius muscle and the semi membranous muscle so this is a benign thing right when you are going to do your uh, rotatory uh, this internship you may find a lot of cases with this baker cyst and the most common complication of this baker cyst is the rupture of the fluid i uh, uh, underline this that the complication i am talking about this baker cyst is rupture of the cyst so there will be a collection of the fluid in the you know uh, uh, what do you call it as uh, in the uh, proximal uh, gastrocnemius muscle belly right okay so due to this rupture it may you know it may feel tender and swelling so this may lead to a that particular area will get a hot and tender swelling so one thing we are very clear that this patient is having baker cyst and we know that this doppler ultrasonography or ultrasonography is the differentiating feature this we are very clear okay another important point that among the options we have to discuss then my dear friend this baker cyst is basically associated with what this baker cyst you can write on a different note or you can write with the the same page that this baker cyst are basically associated with osteoarthritis one so they are associated with osteoarthritis right they are associated with hypothyroidism so among the options we have hyperthyroidism not hypothyroidism so in the options my dear friend it is written hyperthyroidism so it is the answer in the question is going to be hyperthyroidism it is also associated with it can be associated with sarcoidosis it can be associated with sarcoidosis or chronic dialysis right what is the treatment of the baker cyst asymptomatic baker cysts are never treated they are left but if the patient is symptomatic then aspiration of that particular cyst or that fluid along with some corticosteroid injection is given to that particular patient so this we have learned that this case can mimic this dvd case where the people who were thinking that it is going to be deep vein thrombosis right so you can uh, keep this in mind that the ultrasound is mentioning us that there was a compressible cystic mass got my point so this way you have to think like this thing okay ji so over here hyperthyroidism was the less likely to be associated with the less uh, with this leg condition whereas hypothyroidism is associated with baker's cyst okay ji let's move to the next question ha ji guys sle jogren syndrome hepatitis b hepatitis c rheumatoid factor is not associated with yes i am waiting for your replies
you have 5 seconds left guys rheumatoid factor is not associated with options are sle jogran syndrome hepatitis b hepatitis c okay so guys we know that this rheumatoid arthritis or rheumatoid factor i am writing over here rheumatoid factor the rheumatoid factor is which body it is an igm antibody right it is an igm antibody that recognizes the fc portion of igg molecules is basically an igm antibody that recognizes the fc portion of the igg this thing which we have to remember very clearly and it forms a you know uh, complex that basically contribute to the disease process in rheumatoid arthritis we know this thing so this thing is very very important first of all right 70% of the people they are positive with ra factor when they have rheumatoid arthritis first of all and remaining if ra factor is negative then the definitive test which you have to go for is you have to look for the fc portion of the igg antibodies this we are very very clear now there are number of diseases which are associated with a positive ra factor a positive ra factor can be seen with yes in approximately 70% of the people you can find that jogran syndrome patient are associated with a positive ra factor right and approximately 20% of the patient of sle they also show see sle is a multi systemic or multi uh, systemic inflammatory disorder so we know when we have discussed about the sle there was polyarthropathy means multiple joints were involved and there was inflammation so rheumatoid arthritis is going to be there in approximately 20% of the cases right and then my dear friend approximately 40% of the patient are going to be associated with this hepatitis c so what option we are left with we are left with only one option that it is not associated here they are asking a question that it is not associated with hepatitis b so people who have given me the right answer c i appreciate your answer majority of you people have given me the right answer right so 20% sle it is associated jogran syndrome 70% associated hepatitis c it is associated right okay ji yeah systemic sclerosis is also associated so ss is systemic sclerosis approximately 30% of the people are also associated with this systemic sclerosis can we move to the further question so guys you have 45 seconds Aziz sir i hope you are enjoying the class a long question let me help you in reading the question so read the options first urgent ct head start prednisolone immediately ophthalmologist review start amitriptyline immediately okay what is the most appropriate next step of management right okay a 60 year old male presented to you with complaints of blurring of vision in the left eye from last 24 hours and generalized weakness lethargy and left sided headache which is worsening from the last one week he also reports of pain on chewing and on combing his hair over the affected side there is no past medical history on examination left side temporal pulse was not palpable guys i want to know the answer and esr is increased okay so now guys can you please tell me gajanan choudhary chandramohan sir uh, gajanan sir you are giving me and uh, you are giving me the b answer or people who are giving me the a answer okay so urgent city can you please tell me what is the basic diagnosis i am telling you that the clue you have to remember is this and this this is a great clue read this first 
and then re read this mcq again trust me guys you are going to get the answer immediately because you know what is the diagnosis going to be there Gajanan sir, I really appreciate. So yes, you are absolutely right. This patient is having temporal arthritis. Temporal arthritis. Arthritis or we also called as joint cell arthritis. I am just writing in short that it is joint cell arthritis. Now guys, we are very clear that this patient is having temporal arthritis or joint cell arthritis. Now you can correlate this history that when there is a less blood supply or there is inflammation of the vessel, obviously that eye is not going to receive adequate amount of blood. That's why the patient is going to have blurring of vision, right? And generalized weakness, right? Due to inflammation and less supply, this patient is going to have, you know, headache and other symptoms. And, you know, patient is going to have chewing and all these uh, symptoms over here. Now, guys, do remember this thing that... According to this clinical case scenario, this patient is having temporal arthritis or joint cell arthritis, right? And what is the gold standard first of all? Because you people are getting confused. So GS I am writing gold standard guys. What is the gold standard investigation or test for joint cell arthritis? It is going to be the biopsy. I am just writing over here and different not. So gold standard test. Gold standard test for temporal arthritis or joint cell arthritis is going to be a temporal artery biopsy. Temporal artery biopsy. Right. Now, temporal bio artery biopsy, you have to remember this thing, but do remember this thing that in approximately 9 to 10% of the cases, 9 to 10% of the cases, there we see there is a skip lesions. Now, what is the skip lesion? That understand the concept over here. Suppose this is a normal vessel which is going on. This was a normal vessel. And my dear friend, this is a, you know, abnormal vessel. Normal and abnormal vessel. This part I am showing that this is an inflamed part or this is the affected part. Suppose that some patient has some person or the doctor has taken the biopsy from this part. Is it going to give us the effective results? No, it is not going to give us the effective results over here. So will you going, are you going to wait or will you be able to wait to start the treatment? No, you are not going to start the treatment. Even the guidelines itself is saying if you are suspecting a temporal arthritis or joint cell arthritis, immediately you have to commence or start the treatment. And we know that this is an inflammatory disorder of the vessel. And what are the inflammatory, um, uh, uh, anti-inflammatory we have to start immediately? Yes, we know it is the steroid. So we have to start the prednisolone immediately so that the patient can get free from the symptoms immediately. Approximately 20% of the cases or 20% of the patients, they do have visual loss. So they can ask you upon this percentage also, right? And this visual loss can also lead to, you know, this, uh, what you call it, a, a ischemic optic a neuropathy, which is going to be the most common uh, symptom and it is going to help in the diagnosis. So never ever go, wait for the biopsy. Immediately you can start the uh, pregnancy loan so that patient get relief from the symptoms. Then obviously under ultrasound guidance, you can get this biopsy done in temporal arthritis. We will discuss and we will have a detailed class upon uh, rheumatology or connective tissue disorders or vasculitis in fact, right? I hope we are clear with this question. But a previous question, me kya tha answer? Hepatitis B was the answer, right? Vrindar Pradap, I am uh, replying for you this question. Okay. Again, you have 45 seconds and your time starts now.
टाइम्स अप गाइस हाँ जी सो व्हाट इज द लाइकली कॉज एंड द ऑप्शंस आर एसएलई एनकलोजिंग स्पोंडिलाइटिस जोगरन सिंड्रोम एंड फाइब्रोमेलजिया लेट्स रीड द क्वेश्चन अ 40 ईयर ओल्ड फीमेल विजिट्स यू विद कंप्लेंट्स ऑफ जनरलाइज्ड मसल पेन फटीक पैरास्थीसिया इन हर हैंड्स एंड फीट सो दिस इज इंपॉर्टेंट हिस्ट्री जनरलाइज्ड मसल पेन फटीक पैरास्थीसिया इंपॉर्टेंट थिंग on examination you find tenderness on palpation over occipital region supraclavicular areas and in bilateral lower para lumbar regions neurological and gait examination is normal so i am going to limelight it so guys this is normal no evidence of rash synovitis or deforming arthropathy lab reports esr is 8 mm of first hour crp is 4 Creatinine kinase is 150. Serum 125. Polycalciferol is 50. Normal. TSH is also normal. Anti-nuclear antibody is weakly positive. So, guys, what do you think? What is going to be the answer over here? So, Virender Pratap, Vero Reddy, Paras, Just Chill, Gajanan Choudhary, sir, you all have given me the right answer. Yes, it is going to be the fibro. malgia absolutely right it is going to be the fibromalgia see guys do understand this concept fibromalgia needs to be considered in a very early stage when this patient is having you know chronic widespread muscular pains in a case of chronic widespread widespread muscular pains but muscular pains in right you have to think in absence of other obvious causes or diagnosis or diagnosis when this patient present to you with all this you know chronic widespread muscular pains or you know this vague type of symptoms right or but if you find some tenderness then you have to think see if it would have some you know ankylosing spondylitis jogren syndrome sle you would have some changes in the crp esr would have increased right then my dear friend you know anti nuclear antibodies ana would have gone a strongly positive depending upon what kind of um, tissue disorder it is going to be there or uh, it is going to be any rheumatological disorder like sle ankylosing spondylitis or jogren syndrome they have their specific markers and in fact that anti nuclear antibodies are going to be strongly positive in all these cases but in this particular clinical case scenario what is happening that they are weakly positive right so what we are left with we are left with fibromyalgia whereas in fibromyalgia this anti nuclear antibodies may come weakly positive this you have to remember my dear friend okay but do remember this thing that this fibromyalgia is always a diagnosis of exclusion when you have you know worked up for all other possible things then and you didn't find anything and then we are only left with fibromyalgia okay let's move to the next question So again, you have forty-five seconds. so guys okay so again majority of you is giving me the right answer and it is going to be yes bachet's disease so let's read the question what is the likely cause sarcoidosis bachet's disease psoriatic arthropathy and crohn's disease 
so what this question tells us about a 30 year old i'm going to trace out what are the clues or what are the important points which favor us in bachelor's thesis in this mcq 30 year old female presents with one month history of painful mouth ulcers very important this is very important painful mouth ulcer this she had thrice in the previous year so this history is very important according to the guidance thrice so this time duration is the important thrice you have to remember this thing painful mouth ulcer thrice in the year she also reported similar ulcers in the vagina so this is another history very important she had history of anterior uveitis guys another important history on examination she had apostas ulcers on her buccal mucosa what is the likely cause so obviously the answer is going to be the bachelor's disease now why it is going to be the bachelor's disease yes paras patel you are saying right it is going to be a uh, triad over here right okay so bachelor's disease basically a vasculitis of uh, uh, you know what you call it as of an uncertain or uh, you know unknown etiology right and uh, it is widely associated with the clinical findings but the most common feature of this is the most common feature of bachelor's disease is what beta recurrent it is recurrent painful oral ulceration painful oral ulceration is the important important features right and there are some different you know guidelines but the most commonly widely accepted or world widely accepted guideline is the international study group of bachelor's disease these tell us about some criteria right they tell us about the criteria that the first thing that this that this recurrent oral ulceration must be at least three times right in last one year or 12 months whatever you want to call this is one important criteria it should be at least thrice the patient has suffered from this mouth ulceration this is the important plus they should have any of the two what is this any of the two first it can i'm just going to write in different page scenario any of the two plus any of the two among the following and what is this among the following first that the patient can have recurrent genital ulceration recurrent genital ulceration this is one thing second thing is eye lesions eye lesions like patient can have anterior or posterior uveitis anterior or posterior uveitis or even retinal uveitis retinal uh, not uveitis sorry uh, retinal vasculitis right then skin lesions patient can have skin lesion like erythema nodosum erythema nodosum patient can have papulo postular lesions right then another thing is pathology positive pathology test a positive pathology test right so these all are some of the clinical feature along with this do remember this thing that oral ulceration at least thrice in one year or 12 months along with any of these two any of these two this you have to remember guys right okay i hope you have enjoyed this question okay let's move to the next question
so guys there is a picture ct scan is shown over here there is a slice of the ct scan i will read the options and i will give you a hint so options are avp allergic bronchopulmonary aspergillosis hiv rheumatoid arthritis hypergamma globulinemia and the question is asked following is least likely to be associated with this condition a 45 year old patient complains of cough with foul smelling sputum and hrct was done which among the following is least likely to be associated with this condition before you go with the answer you have given me d b a okay bhai c b rahega c b answer de sakte ho we will uh, you know uh, discuss it now guys uh, i would like to know what is this what this ct scan is telling us ha ji what is the ct scan telling us can you please correlate with this ct scan i am giving you a clue over here there is written foul smelling foul smelling foul smelling sputum my question is this where in whole respiratory system particularly one patient comes with a foul smelling and that to be a early morning and as the day progresses his complaints of cough and sputum decreases what i am saying is this that the patient complains of maximum sputum and that to be a foul smelling as he leaves the bed or it's more in the early morning i am giving uh, gajanan it is not interstitial lung diseases no think 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 i know that you have the right answer in your brain just stimulate your nerves and i am pretty sure you guys are going to tell me the right answer guys okay so i am just going to zoom this now guys look at this guys can you please tell me what is this called as what is this there is a track there is a track obviously right vrindar pradap i really appreciate but can you please tell me what is this radiological findings which i have traced over here with red pen so basically this is the dilat not vessels beta airways basically gajanan this is dilatation of the airways with the obstructed mucus over here so this one was what beta this one is what called as signet ring appearance you can see there is a signet ring appearance along with a tram track appearance and obviously not in this city but a honeycomb appearance is seen in a case of what bronch ectasis so this is a city of bronch this is a city of bronch cases and in bronch cases we know what is this bronch cases basically it is the abnormal and the permanent dilatation of the airways abnormal and permanent dilatation of the airways if you read this bronch means bronchus x stasis means stasis stasis means what with a stoppage x stasis means abnormal stoppage so there is abnormally stopped mucus in the airways why does it stops in the bronchiectasis to understand this concept that bronchiectasis has two main causes one it can be divided into you know the congenital causes right so causes we can segregate into two things one is congenital and the other one is acquired causes acquired causes right congenital and acquired causes easy to remember the causes for congenital is picky mnemonic is picky p i c k y picky what is picky the most common cause for congenital is pulmonary ciliary disc uh, sorry not uh, pulmonary primary ciliary dyskinesia primary ciliary dyskinesia right then we have cystic fibrosis cystic fibrosis k is for cartagener syndrome cartagener syndrome right why is young syndrome
why is young syndrome right primary ciliary dyskinesia cystic fibrosis cartagenic syndrome and young syndrome right causes for acquired is atrophic pneumonic is atrophic right now in this the first one is a for allergic bronchopulmonary aspergillosis t is tuberculosis tb r is for rheumatoid arthritis o is for obstructions now obstructions can be a foreign body obstruction it can be an endobronchial mass or growth right any kind of obstruction right then p is for post infections post infections like pneumonia pneumonia even tuberculosis can be also considered over here because tb it's itself is an in, uh, infective disorder then measles mumps measles mumps right pertussis right then very important is hypo gamma globulinemia it is hypo do underline this in the options we had hyper gamma globulinemia but the right answer is hypo gamma globulinemia right then is hiv idiopathic idiopathic right and then chemical pneumonitis chemical pneumonitis so these all are some of the causes of acquired and congenital bronch ectasis do remember this thing guys and when you are going to revise the respiratory medicine please do remember to revise the ct and the x-rays of the various diseases like pneumonia sarcoidosis ARDS, bronchitis, right? So, uh, respiratory system, we will have a thorough revision in the upcoming classes. So, we will also discuss over there. Okay. Okay, G. So, can we proceed to the next question? I hope this question was clear to all of you. Yes, yeah, signet ring. So, what you find, guys, in a city of uh, bronchitis? So in a city of bronchitis, you find some three things very important. Uh, city findings, just note it. City finding, you will find three things. One is honeycombing. Honeycombing. You may find tram track appearance. Tram track appearance. right and you may find a signet ring appearance signet ring appearance let me see if i have that uh, picture yeah i do have that so guys in the city you can find this is called as honeycomb appearance here you can see this is a honeycomb over here right so you can find a honeycomb appearance over here you can see this all this is like a honey bee honey is getting collected right by the bees over here and this you can find this is honeycomb appearance right let me see if i do have that uh, you know picture of uh, signet ring i think i have another picture this is called as a tram track appearance so this is a track and here it is a tram track appearance here it is what better a tram track appearance okay let me show you another picture signet ring signet
so guys you can see over here this is a case of uh, bronchi cases right so these are the abnormally dilated airways you can see and another important point of bronchi cases is this thing that they ask you a question that which side of the lung it is mainly affected then it is the left lower lobes which are most commonly affected in a case why they are most commonly affected you can see over here that in the left side there is an angulation over here whereas in the right due to this anatomical uh, you know uh, uh, structure of uh, this thing uh, airways the mucus takes longer time and it takes more efforts to get excreted or get out of the left lung right and another reason is this thing that when we sleep our sleep maximum of the time is towards the left side to prevent the gastroesophageal reflux disease so the patient is lying down on the left side or it is in the left decubitus so more sputum collection is upon the left side left lower lobe that's why people with bronchial cases they have more problems upon the left lung okay guys okay ji let's move to the next question so again guys you have 45 seconds so guys let's read this what is the most likely causative organism options we have is klebsiella mycoplasma pneumococcal pneumonia klebsiella is twice so guys klebsiella is twice okay let's remove this we have three options okay i am writing any of the above any of above now again you have 10 seconds to rethink okay so guys basically this patient is having what guys a non productive cough headache joint pain generalized weakness so means this patient is having non productive cough or we can say this patient is having a dry cough very clear so along with other symptoms like joint pain headache generalized weakness it is very clear that this patient is having what better this patient is having a flu like symptoms so this patient is having flu like symptoms now can you please be kind to tell me that which organism is presenting with all these flu like symptoms provided that we know that this klebsiella and pneumococcal pneumonia they most commonly present with a cup with sputum means productive cup or expectoration right they are commonly presenting with this thing right some more we are left with mycoplasma another clue which is given over here that this patient is having maculopapular rash with target lesions right and bilateral patchy consolidation so if this patient is coming with flu like symptoms 
do remember this thing that mycoplasma is mycoplasma pneumoniae is basically so mycoplasma pneumoniae pneumonia is going to be the right answer over here it's basically an, an infection which comes or which presents like uh, you know flu like symptoms and it affects important points of this thing it affects young people first most commonly most commonly it affects the young people young age people right and it has been noted or documented very well that this mycoplasma pneumonia epidemics occur epidemics occur approximately in every 3 to 4 years do remember this thing another you must have read this in psm also that mycoplasma pneumonia epidemics occurs in 3 to 4 years so you have to rule out very carefully you have to do the blood investigations that while you have to do the blood investigation because my dear friend that this mycoplasma pneumonia is most commonly associated with hemolytic anemia it is associated with hemolytic anemia now why it is associated with hemolytic anemia because as a result of cold agglutinance right so cold agglutinance is one thing very important you have to remember or you can also remember you know mycoplasma pneumonia as a mnemonic when I was, uh, uh, you know, preparing for the PG, I remembered it like spy games. Spy game. Right. Now, these spy games, this is a mnemonic. This is basically a complication of mycoplasma pneumonia. Now, what is this spy games? Spy as far it people may present with Steven Johnson syndrome. One thing. Stevens. Johnson syndrome P is for peri or myocarditis pericarditis or myocarditis right or P is for also they may present with peripheral neuropathy neuropathy or platelets low means i am writing over here so p means low platelets thrombocytopenia may present i is for intravascular coagulation or we call it as disaminated intravascular coagulation so i is disaminated intravascular coagulation right another complication of this is g for is it is gullen barre syndrome it is gbs gullen barre syndrome a is another complication and a well-known complication that the patient can i just told you there is agglutination and there is autoimmune hemolytic anemia autoimmune hemolytic anemia right patient is having autoimmune hemolytic anemia m is for meningoencephalitis meningoencephalitis right we are left with e e is for what better erythema nodosum erythema nodosum erythema nodosum and multiforme and multiforme right and another important thing that on radiological thing when you are going to see the chest x-ray you will find a typically chest x-rays as in the mcq it was shown that you will find a typical bilateral patchy consolidation very very important patchy consolidation patchy 
consolidation guys so these are some of the important clues if you are going to encounter flu like symptoms non productive cough or any of the following among all this five games is written in your mcq and the age of the patient itself is very important as i just told you that it is going to affect the youngsters most commonly and the epidemic occurs in 3 to 4 years most commonly so these are some of the clues which are going to give you a hint or indication about yes mycoplasma pneumonia right okay right guys another important thing klebsiella there is a radiological klebsiella in the next session i would like to ask the important radiological feature of klebsiella pneumoniae can you will you be there to tell me what are the important radiological features of klebsiella or the important clues of klebsiella in which category of people klebsiella you can find right and my uh, this pneumococcal pneumonia i would love to hear your answers then okay leading to the next question again you have 45 seconds guys so guys let's read the question what are the options we have options we have is squamous cell carcinoma of the lung adenocarcinoma alveolar cell carcinoma of the lung small cell carcinoma of the lung and what the examiner is asking what is the most likely diagnosis okay so already you are giving me squamous a a a a a a why a is the answer guys you have read this question let me again tell you what are the clues you may rethink a uh, 65 year old man known smoker complains of dry cough since last one month but recently he started having cough with bright red blood every day he reports that he has lost approximately 5 kg of weight over last one month and he also complains of dry mouth with weakness in his legs and feel difficulty in getting up from chair but his weakness improves on walking so this line difficulty in getting up from the chair but weakness improves on walking is the important thing to give us the right answer so guys as you said right that this patient definitely is going to have you know you are saying me a okay i am going to stick with this answer small cell carcinoma of the lung is going to be the right answer i understand that you must be confused with this option that this patient is a smoker and smoking is mainly associated with most commonly it is associated with squamous cell carcinoma of the lung central location i do agree with this point but guys लास्ट नाइन पढ़ो क्या लिखी हुई है कैन यू प्लीज टेल मी व्हाट इज द कॉम्प्लिकेशन ऑफ स्मॉल सेल कार्सिनोमा ऑफ द लंग राइट नाउ व्हाट इज द कॉम्प्लिकेशन राइट नाउ 
this patient has basically landed up into a complication of the small cell carcinoma of the lung and what is the complication it is lambert eaton syndrome lambert eaton not eaton syndrome right and this is a typical feature which occurs in small cell lung cancer the typical finding of this that the patient when starts moving he feels improved he feels strengthened or when the patient is sitting or lying down when he initiates his walk if he tries to get up his muscles they feel very weak right so this is the characteristic feature of lambert eaton syndrome unlike myasthenia gravis there is increased strength after exercise right see another feature of this you may find even patient may have hyporeflexia hyporeflexia right patient can have gait problem or gait difficulty right so how you are going to make the diagnosis obviously you are going to do the ct biopsy everything for the chest you are going to do but to get the, you know about the diagnosis of this thing so you have to go for this uh, electromyography one thing right and then you have to check for the auto antibodies you have to check for you know uh, that uh, multi sensitive calcium uh, channels uh, uh, they will have some problem right antibodies there, there will be antibodies over there okay uh treatment guys if once it is diagnosed that this patient is having lambert eaton syndrome the best treatment is going to be you know uh, plasma pheresis is going to be there and then uh, you have to give you know uh, steroids like prednisolone or intravenous immunoglobulins needs to be given as a part of the treatment so guys i request all of you to please read the question carefully and read the clues very very importantly only then we are going to you know approach to a question in an appropriate manner ओके okay. चलो अनदर इंटरेस्टिंग क्वेश्चन यू हैव फोर्टी फाइव सेकेंड्स अगेन right okay so guys uh, what is the stage of sarcoidosis stage 1 2 3 4 40 40 year year old man non case of sarcoidosis present to you for a routine check up on history taking he says he is not taking any medication below given is his chest x rays so guys guys okay can you please be kind to tell me what you see in this chest x ray what are the basic findings only then you are going to tell me na uh, that uh, now where is the problem or what stage is this kajanan your answer is right lymphadenopathy and infiltrates absolutely right not just infiltrates right
I am going to zoom it. Now you can see very clearly. Sana Memon mediastinal lymph nodes. It is hyalur lymph nodes, beta. Hyalur. The correct word is hyalur lymph nodes. Now, guys, you have seen this X-ray, right? I will show you another some of the features, radiological features of sarcoidosis. So we have four stages upon the chest X-rays, or basically we have, you know, in stage zero we start radiologically. In stage zero, I haven't mentioned because you don't find abnormalities. You may only find a trica over here. So stage zero no abnormality in stage one what you are finding over here is this my dear friend what you are finding is this that this patient is having you know this area and this area is what bilateral hyalur lymph adenopathy what you find in stage one it is bilateral hyalur lymph adenopathy adenopathy you find over here in stage one and this is the bilateral hyalur limp adenopathy you are finding over here got my point okay now look at this look at this picture what you have seen earlier over here so here you are finding not just bilateral hyalur limp adenopathy this hyla is enlarged limp adenopathy over here but if you look carefully at this area particularly, then what you are finding over here, that there is reticular infiltrates over here. So what finding we find in stage 2, that we find one, we find bilateral hyalur lymphadenopathy. We find bilateral hyalur adenopathy with reticulonodular infiltrates. Reticular, or just remember that you find uh, uh, what you find. Just a second. Reticular infiltrates you find. Infiltrates you find. Yes. Now, what you find in this stage three, guys? Here you are not finding hyalateral, uh, bilateral hyalur lymphadenopathy, but more of you are going to find pulmonary infiltrates you will find. So you can see in this case, you are going to find infiltrates over here and over here. This is stage 4. This stage 4 is going to tell you about diffuse reticular infiltrates. Diffuse reticular infiltrates. One thing with fibrosis means now the lung damage is has occurred notice has occurred so now you can see that there is fibrosis over here right so i am just going to show you over here this whole area is fibrosis over here now this you can see there is a fibrosis right so diffuse reticular infiltrates one thing you are going to find diffuse changes or infiltrates whatever you want to call along with you are going to find a fibrosis also right i hope we are clear with this so we have stage zero also is there where you find now if we talk about the treatment do remember this thing if the patient is asymptomatic beta there is no need to treat the patient patient is left untreated right but if the patient is having radiological changes along with the patient is having symptoms like progressive shortness of breath dry cough and in abg there is a you know type 1 respiratory failure obviously you are going to treat the patient and what treatment you are going to give to this patient and uh, in lab investigations if there is written hypercalcemia obviously you are going to treat this patient then your first option will be you are going to give the steroids like prednisolone you are going to give right and uh, they ask you another question what are the indications of uh, you know giving the treatment 
So if there is any cardiac involvement, if there is any neurological involvement in a case of sarcoidosis, obviously you are going to treat the patient. If the patient is asymptomatic, no need to treat the patient. Do remember this thing. Okay. So let's move to the next question. Another interesting question. Guys, you have 15 seconds left. Haji guys, I am giving you 10 more seconds. I think this is a lengthy question and you have to think so another 10 more seconds okay time's up understand the question now they are asking what is the most appropriate next step in the management of the patient option a endotracheal intubation and mechanical ventilation option b high flow oxygen with 15 liters per minute with reservoir mass option c maintain current oxygen supply and repeat abg after 30 minutes increase oxygen to 8 liter per minute via venturi mask okay a 60 year old man visits you with complaints of fever, cough and wheeze. He is a known case of COPD. The first very important clue is that this patient is a known case of COPD and was on NIV food in his last admission in the hospital. This is the important thing. So we know that this 65 year old male patient who from COPD, we can presume that this patient was a smoker. And if he was on a NIV food, it means there was a time when he had a you know type 2 respiratory failure where his oxygen level would have increased right on examination he was conscious oriented this is the another important clue to understand that this patient is conscious oriented why i am telling you that this patient this consciousness level or his gcs is important because if the patient of cupd retains carbon dioxide it the increased level of carbon dioxide can decline in the neurological functions or it can decline in the conscious level do remember this thing i will just discuss in a white uh, temperature he is uh, you know febrile heart rate is 96 okay bp is normal respiratory rate is also normal important thing is this that his saturation spo2 is 90 percent with 4 liter of oxygen it is normal because we target approximately 85 to 90 percent of the saturation of a case of COPD, right on auscultation, bilateral bees all over the chest. Below given is the chest x ray. So, let's look at the chest x ray. So, we find that there is a bilateral consolidation, means this patient is having acute exacerbation of COPD plus super added infection to this patient, means this patient has presented with COPD and pneumonia according to the chest x ray and the clinical features. Why I am saying that this patient is having pneumonia? Look at the temperature, he is febrile, and look at the chest x ray. Right, so this patient has some type of uh, you know infective biology. Going to ABG, very important. ABG is on four liter per minute. The pH is seven point three seven. Normal, normal range of pH is how much beta? Seven point three five to seven point four five. So it is going to be normal. PCO two is going to be fifty five. PCO two sorry is going to be fifty five. It is increased. How much is the level? It is. 35 to 45 it is the level of the normal pcot where in this case pcot level is increased 
bicarbonate is 30 so what is the normal range of bicarbonate we consider it as 24 plus minus 2 means it may range between 22 to 26 so it is increased lactate is okay and oxygen level PO2 level must be the PO2 level is 90 percent as I told you earlier the PO2 level or the SPO2 level in the case of COPD non case of COPD is basically our target is 85 to 90 percent so what this question is telling us this question is telling us one the patient is having acute exacerbation of COPD some more patient is having uh, what you call it as a, a pneumonia or some super added infection right now based upon this you can see over here that PCO2 level is 66 means this patient is retaining carbon dioxide right it is is the retaining carbon dioxide right it includes if the carbon I would have intubated the patient if the patient conscious level would have reduced if the patient conscious level would have reduced since this patient is conscious level is normal it is not reduced i am not going to do any kind of endotracheal intubation and mechanical ventilation okay ji. so what i am going to do guys over here i will only give maintain the current oxygen supply and repeat the abg after 30 minutes why i am going to do this thing because i told you that in the case of copd our target range our target range kitna hai beta is 85 to 90 percent of the saturation 85 to 90 percent of the saturation needs to be maintained over here whereas in this mcq spo2 is 90 percent and oxygen level is going to be 90 percent right so I am just going to maintain the current oxygen supply and I am going to repeat an ABG after 30 minutes. If there is a decline in the oxygen or if there is an increase in the carbon dioxide level, if it is going to increase and some more if it is going to change the neurological status, obviously then I am going to take the further measurements like I can put the patient upon the NIV sport or I can go for a endotracheal intubation or mechanical ventilation right do remember this thing if you give oxygen more oxygen can also lead to more retention of carbon dioxide i repeat do not give unnecessary oxygen to any patient particularly that to of a patient with copd because co2 if you give oxygen obviously it is going to you know the patient is going to retain carbon dioxide so you wanted to help the patient but what happened the carbon dioxide got retained and his neurological status will decline got my point so always wait if the patient conscious level and some more if the patient is having another very good clue was there that if the patient was going in respiratory fatigue obviously i would have gone for endotracheal intubation and mechanical ventilation but look at the respiratory rate it is 20 per minute so still i have a time to wait and watch got my point so guys that's why i have gone for this uh, option maintain current oxygen supply and repeat abg and repeat abg right okay G. so guys i hope you have enjoyed this today's session right do prepare well keep on revising the things again and again and again and stay in touch stay tuned to the unacademy app where you will find more lectures more authenticated knowledge and how to approach the mcqs by each and every faculty so guys thank you very much take care good night guys you are asking ashi you are asking beta abg po2 is 66 PO2 is 66 times 66. SPO2 90% oxygen on oscillation V is below. Okay.
पी ओ टू सिक्सटी सिक्स ओके बेटा कोई इशू नहीं है पी ओ टू अगर सिक्सटी सिक्स भी है तो नथिंग टू वरी आई थॉट ओवर दिस ओवर हेयर बिकॉज देर आर टू थिंग्स रिटर्न ओवर हेयर ऑक्सीजन ओ टू इज नाइनटी परसेंट सो आई जस्ट मिस दिस आई एम रिप्लाइंग यूर क्वेश्चन ओवर हेयर दैट इवन इफ द पी ओ टू इज सिक्सटी सिक्स लुक एट द एक्सरेज लुक एट द एक्सरे इट माइट बी बिकॉज ऑफ द निमोनिया गॉट माई पॉइंट But in a case of COPD, always focus upon the CO2 level. Here you have to focus upon the CO2 level. People with a chronic, you know, um, uh, not chronic, sorry, COPD, they tend to have, you know, their own baseline for CO uh, carbon dioxide, right? They are going to little increase from, uh, you know, 45. some may get settled at 50 some may get at 55 so they every patient will present with their own settlement of the copd levels right all you have to remember is the patient is going to in respiratory fatigue or you have to look for the conscious level this you have to make it as a hum group right okay ashish ma'am i think i have uh, given you right answer Ashi, you have asking so, sir, should we not change the oxygen source to BiPAP? Beta, see in the option it is written repeat ABG. NIV support or BiPAP, you are only going to give if the patient is going to have you know respiratory fatigue. Respiratory rate twenty is, बच्चे तो क्यों उसको unnecessarily BiPAP देना है? काम चल सकता है अभी हमारा. Thank you, बच्चे. So thank you guys. Good night. Take care. Enjoy yours. coming day that is sunday with lot of revision and revision thank you very much we'll see you in the next class